Filming with a puppy. This is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. She's very distracting. What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. It has been a very hot minute since I did a new episode of my Studying for Dental Hygiene series. And if you've been following along with my videos, you know that it is because I got this little precious baby and we've been very distracted with her and making puppy videos. But I do still have a ton of videos to make for this series. So in today's video, I am going to be doing the sixth episode for this series. And today's video is going to kind of be like a part two of my a dental nutrition video but just a little bit more in depth so in today's episode we are going to be doing vitamins minerals and teeth oh my So when I was at dental hygiene school, I had this huge binder full of so many cheat sheets just so that way I had somewhere to quickly reference anything that I possibly had a question on or things that patients frequently asked me about. And one thing that patients frequently ask is, what can I take for that? What can I take to help with that? And as dental hygienists, we are not allowed to prescribe any medications, but we can always give suggestions for supplements as long as they okay it with their PCP. So in today's video, I'm going to be going through the top most common vitamins and supplements, what natural sources you can get them from as far as food goes, what do they do for your teeth in particular or your gums, anything surrounding that, anything at all that involves your mouth, as well as what deficiencies and these certain items can cause within the oral cavity. So this is my handy dandy cheat sheet for vitamins and minerals that I had in dental hygiene school. So the very first one that we are going to be covering is vitamin A. So vitamin A could be found in a ton of different food items, but just to name a few, we have carrots, yellow squash, red and green peppers, spinach, kale, butter, and beef liver. So what does vitamin A have to do with your teeth? How does that affect your teeth? It builds and maintains healthy gums. It aids in the development of your salivary glands as well as the epithelial tissue. It aids with your immune system. It boosts the production of white blood cells, which are needed to help fight off infection. It helps regulate cell growth and differentiation, and it also helps regulate bone remodeling. Vitamin A is an essential vitamin for periodontal and oral tissue health. If you have a deficiency in vitamin A, some things that, that can occur are you would have an altered epithelial integrity, you could have dry mouth, so you could have xerostomia, you can have oral local you can have oral leukoplakia, which is a white patch that you could find within your mouth. You could have hyperkeratosis and hyperplastic gingival tissue. Then moving on to vitamin B. We're gonna do vitamin B complex. So vitamin B complex, a great source of this, is whole grains. Vitamin B complex aids in the formation of new cells. It aids in the health of your immune system, as well as the development of the epithelial and connective tissues. Vitamin B complex, vitamin Bs are also essential for periodontal and oral tissue health. If you have a deficiency in vitamin Bs, you will notice glossitis, which is inflammation of the tongue. You can notice gingivitis, which is inflammation of the gums. You can notice angular chelosis, which are cracked commissures, so this little angle around each corner of your mouth. You can even notice stomatitis, which is inflammation of the entire mouth. And on top of that, you could get necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Moving straight in order, we're gonna go to vitamin C. Some great sources of vitamin C include citrus fruits, kiwis, strawberries, as well as cabbage, pineapples, mangoes, guava, baked potato. And what vitamin C does, it aids in wound healing and it helps your body to resist infection. Vitamin C aids in the development of collagen and connective tissue, and it is also needed for periodontal and oral tissues. There are several things that you can notice if you have a deficiency in vitamin C, and that includes scurvy, purplish, red, swollen gums. You can notice that your gums bleed, again, that gingivitis. You can notice petechiae, which are little red flat dots. They are not raised. Your teeth can be loose. You can have slow gum healing time. And again, you can have that nug, that necrotizing ulcerative gums, which are very painful, again, due to the lower resistance. Moving on to vitamin D. Vitamin D, of course, some great sources of that are sunshine, milk, 
salmon, tuna fish, eggs, sardines, Swiss cheese, beef liver, pudding. And what vitamin D does is it helps with the calcium absorption, which I'm going to cover calcium in just a minute, but it also aids to help maintain a strong alveolar bone. So the bone in your mouth is not the same as the bone in the rest of your body. So the bone in your mouth is called alveolar bone, which is what holds your teeth basically in place. That is the cement around your teeth. It helps in the calcification of the alveolus, which is the tooth socket where the tooth actually sits, and the cementum, which is another layer of the tooth. It maintains your immune and repair responses. It helps to prevent osteoporosis. Some issues that you can see with a vitamin D deficiency are an adequate healing of bone. We don't notice after an extraction that their bone is healing very well. It's taking them a very long time and that can be from a vitamin D deficiency. Now in addition to that, it can contribute to the severity of the alveolar bone loss. It can also cause thinning of the alveolar bone. So vitamin D, as you can see, has a lot to do with the health of your bone. Moving on to vitamin K. Some sources of that are broccoli, kale, cabbage, peas, milk, lettuce, Brussels sprouts, a bunch of greens. A deficiency in vitamin K can cause poor clotting. So whenever I think of vitamin K, I think of clot, K and clot. Even though it's K and clot has a C, it kind of sounds the same. So vitamin K and clotting, just always remember that those two go together. And it also can prevent your wounds to stop healing. So again, preventing the clotting factor, you're going to bleed more. She is so cute. You are so cute. Your shoe is. You're a wild girl, but you're cute. Bless you. Bless you. So we're gonna come off of the vitamins and into some of the essential minerals. So the first mineral that we're gonna go over is protein. So protein, obviously meat, cow's milk, eggs, fish, legumes, peas, beans, grains, all great sources of protein. Larcy, can you not like sit in the very front of where I'm trying to film? Please and thank you. Can you go like over here? Okay, good. So protein promotes the growth, maintenance, and repair of tissues. So protein <laughs> helps promote the growth, maintenance, and repair of tissues. And it also manufactures antibodies. So these little guys that also help to fight infection. A deficiency in protein can cause necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Again, those painful, very painful gums that are due to a lowered resistance. So next we are going to do calcium. And some great food sources of calcium are fortified cereal, soy, sardines, tofu, yogurt, spinach, cow's milk, and mozzarella cheese. Why is calcium important for your teeth? Why is it important for your bones? Why is calcium important for your mouth? Well, calcium builds and maintains a strong alveolar bone. It maintains your immune and repair response, and it is good for the alveolus and cementum. So again, the alveolus is your tooth socket. It is where your tooth sits. A deficiency in calcium, as I'm sure you could guess, can contribute to the severity of the alveolar bone loss. So again, people who have issues with their bone, who have gum disease, who've just had a tooth pulled, who need help healing that bone, any deficiency in calcium is going to inhibit that process. Marcy. I'm trying to film a YouTube video. Can you like just do it over here? Come on, go over here. Go over here, good girl. So moving on to iron and zinc. Iron and zinc can be found in oysters, clams, pumpkins, white beans, liver, beef, lamb, venison, and yogurt. Why are iron and zinc important for your mouth? Well, they form the collagen in the connective tissue and it aids in wound healing. It helps to maintain your immune and repair response and it regulates your inflammatory response. A deficiency in iron can make it very difficult for red blood cells to carry oxygen from your lungs to other tissues. Next, we have copper. Some great sources of copper can be liver, whole grains, nuts, legumes, vegetables, and fruits. Copper aids in wound healing and repair. Next, we have selenium. Selenium can be found in snapper, cod, tuna, shrimp, lamb, I wrote lamp, and barley. 
and it helps to prevent harm done to cells. Magnesium. Magnesium can be found in pumpkin, Brazilian nuts, fortified cereal, spinach, and almonds. And magnesium helps to build and maintain the alveolar process. It is good for the alveolus and the cementum. And a deficiency in magnesium can make you feel weak and tired. It can increase your heartbeat as well as it cause muscle cramps, pain, and high blood pressure. And then lastly, on my list for today, I have phosphorus. So phosphorus is great for the alveolus and cementum, and a deficiency in phosphorus can contribute to the severity of the alveolar bone loss. So those are probably some of the biggest vitamins and minerals that I get questions on, or just things in general that people will ask, well, how can I improve my bone health? How can I prevent my body from losing bone faster? How can I improve gum tissue health? How can I improve this? How can I do that? So I hope that that was helpful and informative for you guys. Guys, if you have anything that you would like to add to the video, please feel free to do so in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. If you don't want to miss any more of my videos, especially any videos in this series, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I will leave a link to my entire studying for dental hygiene series down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys! <laughs>